Gary, what's some things that the people out there can do to help with the Classic American Arcade? Okay, th uh, things we're looking for, um, donations of course always help, monetary donations are always a big help. A lot of people uh, think, well, oh wow, you got this room out there, it's got 275 games and you must make a fortune on it. And actually the opposite is, is true because they, they're older games, there's not a huge amount of gameplay on them, it's not where people are going to sit there all day pumping yeah. tokens into them. And they're high maintenance. The bottom line, they're very, very high maintenance. And just look at the number of times. If I could walk through this game room right now, and at least a half a dozen people are going to grab me yeah. for, you know, can you fix this, fix that, fix this. And it's just due to the age. It's, as I've told people before, you know, I kind of make the analogy of, you know, you've got the big car rental companies, Hertz, Budget, Avis, all of yeah. them. They're not running 25-year-old cars. Yeah. There's a reason, yeah. because they would be fixing them all the time. People would be calling in, my car broke down, you know, the muffler fell off, or whatever. So, it's, it's old stuff, and of course, you know, cash donations are a great help, and I've had other people approach me and they say, well, you know, you know I really want to help you out, but I don't have any money. And I'm like, you know, I, I understand. I said, but you know what, little things help as well. Joysticks, buttons. Do you have, you know, any uh, laying around uh, Molex connectors, you know, that people have an old wiring harness they threw in a drawer and said, oh, I'll just keep cutting parts off it as yep. I need it. And I was saying that to somebody about two or three weeks ago, and he goes, you know what, I just bought a game, and laying in the bottom of it were a bunch of bases off of joysticks. If you want them, I'll give them to you. And I said, oh, okay. So we brought in, we got about 10 bases off of uh, leaf switch joysticks, and they're all in great condition. Yeah. And that's things that, you know, it's, people are thinking, you know, they always think, oh man, if I had $100 or $1,000, I'd yeah. give it to you. But, you know, joystick bases, buttons, you know, a, a, a button breaks on a game or whatever. You got spares, or you got a game and you want to fix it up, and, you know, it's got a big cigarette burn on yeah. it, and you'd really like to have a nice white button in there that didn't have a cigarette burn. You know, anything helps. And they can just go on, they can buy maybe a place like Bob Roberts and hash sure. controls and just maybe do like a bulk buy and just send it to you, right? Yeah, and, and sometimes, you know, people will, will they'll go on a, on a bulk buy, the, you know, a warehouse raid or something mm -hmm. like that, and they'll get a bunch of games and sometimes end up with boxes of parts and stuff they may not have a use for. And if they, you know, if they don't have a use for it and they want to donate it to us, they can. And the other thing too is, the American Classic Arcade Museum is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So donations made to us are tax deductible, and that's that. A lot of people have taken advantage of that and donated games to us, full working games. Yeah. Uh, you'll see a lot of games out there with signs on the top recognizing these folks for the contributions they've made to the Arcade Museum. And it's it's fun for us to get these and we're so honored that people think so highly of us that they, you know, they'll donate a machine. And it also I think is fun for them because they can bring their friends up or whatever and say, hey look, you know, that's my game. Up. I that's my game. That. Yeah, you know, let's play. And they know it's always here. And I guess the main mission of the Arcade Museum is to save this history. Whereas, you know, a lot of people buy games for their personal collection, now they're out of circulation. And they brought so, in the basement. Well, and not only that, but now, if if you don't know someone that has a basement full of classic coin ops, where are you going to play them? Exactly. How are you going to, you know, experience this That's why we do Arcade history. Hunters, there's no sure. places to go. Yeah, so, you know, it's nice to have people be able to come here and for you know an hour or a day or a weekend, you know you just go in the other room, you close your eyes and you listen. And it's like wow, you know this is everything I remember from when I was 16 or 17, and I used to go at the now, local arcade. Now you saying with the you, we have a shortage of monitors. Is there any like specific monitors? They can't just hack a TV and. No, it's that's the other thing too. Is 19-inch um, CRT monitors have become like hen's teeth now. They're very hard to come by. And most of the games, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been talking all week here. Most of the games running out on the floor here are all running 19 inch CRTs. And, you know, to keep them as accurate as possible, we like to keep 
up with the same technology. Yeah. I've had people say, well, why waste your time looking for those? Why don't you just get a 19-inch LCD and stick yeah. it in there? It's like, they, it doesn't look the same. Yeah. It, you know, functionality, it's the same. You're going to complain about it. You get a picture, yeah. but there's just something about it that it's and just you're watching not quite it, it looks right. Wrong. And you, and you want to try, obviously, to make it as accurate as possible, but also functioning at the same time. But I just, I haven't been fully sold on putting flat screens into old school games. You did do it on like some of the, uh, I think Space Tool has one, right? right that was something uh, just put in yesterday. We work uh, with Sarah St. John. She owns a company called My Arcade Repair out of the uh, southern part of New Hampshire here. And we have her come in sometimes, like uh, help before the tournament yeah. prep with game repairs and such. And she's worked with a company that developed this interface because there's, as most people know, color vector games are a nightmare. The monitors always are a problem. You know, if, if they're not working, they're on fire. Yeah. You know, there's, there's the game. smoking. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, and I have a funny story about that from the old days. But um, so they've developed this interface board that allows you to, and it's plug and play. You take the output from the board, plug it into this, and you plug this into an SVGA monitor, and it'll do vector. Yeah. So and it, it looked really nice. It was hard to tell. Yeah, it was. Time. It was quick to get it out there because uh, we had hoped that it would have been here earlier, and we could have taken more time. But it was just, it arrived Friday at Sarah's shop, and she came up here Saturday morning, and we quickly threw it in the game so folks could see it, and you know if they've got a, a color vector game at home that you know. Who doesn't have one that has a monitor problem? Yeah. Uh, you know, this this is an alternative. You know that you can put something in that's modern technology. I know I used to have games in my basement, and you know my wife would say, "Oh, we've got people coming over this weekend. Make sure the games work." Oh God! <laughs> and I'd go downstairs, and we had like thirty of them, and I'd go down, I flip them on, and there's like ten that don't yeah. work, and I'm like, "Oh no!" That's you know, because we hadn't run them in two months or whatever. So now I'm down there scrambling two days before we've got company yeah. coming over, Make sure fixing games, works. you know. And it's just, as if you can save yourself, obviously you want to play games to have fun. You don't want to have games so that you're just constantly working on them. So a lot of times, you know, if you can replace an old linear supply with a switching power supply, you know it's going to be more reliable. And if you've got a color vector and you're willing to swap it over to put in a flat screen, you just know that every time you turn it on, it isn't going to burst into yeah. flames. So pretty much tell everybody at home where they can go to make a donation if they'd like to. Uh, you can go to our website, which is classicarcademuseum.org, and we have, you can either donate through the PayPal tab that we have on there, or there's also our actual physical mailing address, which is P.O. Box 5533, Where's Beach, New Hampshire. And if you want to mail a check or whatever, whatever people are more comfortable with, um, that's that works. And fine. any type of like part sale have to go through. Parts, you yeah, you can't send you know, it to a PO box. Right, right. Drop us an email, you know, and and I'll, you know, be more than happy yeah. to. Any uh, anything can help. Right? Yeah, it it's it's amazing. Like I said, it it's little things count too. Like the the box of joystick bases we got beginning of the tournament. Uh, one of the gentlemen came in here and he says, Hey, look. He goes, I, I love what you're doing. I brought you a whole bag of Wyco, new old stock Wyco leaf switch joysticks. Yeah. It's like, you can't even find those anymore. Yeah. You, they go up on eBay, somebody puts one up and somebody bids it up to 30, 35 bucks. And they're gone. And they're gone. Yeah. You know? Same thing with like the Nintendo joysticks, right? Yeah, if you could find any of those. I'd love to get one of those. Yeah. So thank you very much once again for talking with us, Great. Gary. And as you know, go to uh, the website. And if you have anything to donate to help these guys going, please go and make that donation. Thank you very much for watching.